The best part of my morning is my time with you. When I get in the car and I drive to work, I can't wait to talk to you. Nobody listens better than you, and I suppose nobody can talk better than me. No matter what the circumstances are, I know I can talk to you about anything. Your quiet delivery of advice frustrates me sometimes, but I understand that I need to make my own decisions. I wish you would just once say you are on the right path and that you're proud of me. I would kill to hear those words come out of, out of your mouth. Mom, did you hear that same-sex marriage passed in Delaware? Sonia and I will finally be able to get married and be recognized by the state. I love that I can ask you about relationship advice. It's amazing how you can love someone so much who is completely different than you. I don't know how the two of us get anywhere on time. Sonia hates being put on a time schedule, and I'm always rushing her. It reminds me of all the family vacations we used to take to Disney World, and how Daddy would run from ride to ride. He would try to get the whole park done in a day, and you could care less and just wanted to stroll around leisurely. I can still hear you saying, we are on vacation, Irwin, slow down. I can't even tell you the amount of times Sonia has said this to me while on vacation. I promise. I promise I'm going to try and take your advice and savor every moment and not try and rush through it just to get to the next thing. Mom, don't you find our marriage talk so ironic? You must feel some sort of vindication. You and Daddy were always fighting, and I thought as a kid, why don't they just get a divorce already? But you would always say, just give it time, Donna, and you'll understand. You were right. I now understand that the two of you loved each other and marriage is fucking hard. (laughs) And living with someone day in and day out takes work and it isn't always sunshine and rainbows. I often wonder if daddy wished he had slowed down and enjoyed every moment. He died so young and quickly that our lives changed in an instant. I wish I talked to you more after he died. I was only 19 and he died so quickly. I wish you and I talked about how we were feeling and dealing with the one person in our lives who loved us unconditionally. It was hard for me, but now I know it must have been even harder for you. 40 years of marriage and a lifetime of memories to deal with all alone in a big empty house. No wonder you were depressed and angry with no will to live. I blamed you back then for not taking care of me when daddy died. I was a baby then, but now I understand. I can't imagine the pain of living without my spouse. I now know that I too would not have the will to live. I struggled to move on and deal with my sadness, but you couldn't. It ate you up and consumed your every waking moment. It made you sick, literally. Within two years, your body just couldn't take it anymore and cancer took over. I dropped my life and moved home to be with you. At 21, I bathed and fed you. I cooked and cleaned. I sat by your side during treatments. I listened to you cry yourself to sleep. But I was 21, and I didn't know what to do. I was still grieving for Daddy, and I resented that you couldn't talk to me. Or maybe I couldn't talk to you. I was struggling, but you were dying. Regrets still creep into my head. Could I have done more? Was I there for you as much as I could? I tried to be loving and nurturing, but I became so angry. I was angry that I was the baby and I was the only one there for you in your time of need. I was angry that you weren't willing to fight for your life. You just gave up, and I couldn't understand why you weren't doing more to try to save your life. I still feel selfish and guilty at times because I couldn't give you all that you needed. I wanted you to say something like, you're gonna be fine. And I'm sorry I won't be there to see you get married and have kids. But you didn't. You couldn't. The one thing I don't regret was the night I was leaving hospice. And I said, I love you. And you wouldn't say it back. You waved me off and, told, and I told you, I am not leaving until you say it back. Finally, you said it. And those are the last words you ever said to me. So now I talk to you every morning or on long car rides. I wonder if you can hear me or see who I've become. I wonder what you would think of who I've become and the choices I've made. 
I think of you every single day. But for the most part, I think of the love that you were able to give me while you were alive and the amazing foundation you gave me. So thanks, Mom. Happy, happy Mother's Day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.